Have you ever felt totally alone? How long can you be by yourself before your demons start coming out? In this video, I will share my 10 tips for how to avoid the dark side, plus the silly way I'm using this phone to meet people and how you can do something similar. My name is Liz Amazing. I live in my RV while I'm traveling the country and it's my mission to help and inspire others. Hello. <laughs> Isn't this phone ridiculous? Oh my gosh. How long has it been since you have seen a rotary phone? Oh my goodness. Well, while the phone is silly, today's subject is not. This is a very serious subject that I think all of us have been through. We have all felt alone. And loneliness and isolation are very, very common when you're out on the road, even if you're traveling as a couple. If you live alone in bricks and sticks or if you're on your own on the road, I'm sure you can relate to how easily you can go from solitude down that slippery slope to isolation. And isolation can be really a dark, scary place. For me, what isolation looks like is I stay in bed too long. I've got my head under the covers. I'm not meeting people. I'm in hermit mode. I find myself getting sadder and in this downward spiral. And this is a new life for me. I've had to learn how to cope with being by myself. I've been on the road for nine months. And before that, I was married and had a full social life. So not only did I have my husband as a companion, but I had a lot of things that I was doing socially. I was out and about. I went to yoga, lunches, dinners, book club, writing group, women's circle, spiritual center. So I was really out and connected. Now, here I am 3,000 miles away from my hometown. There's no one around. I have no social life. So I've learned a lot in my time totally by myself. Not only have I learned about how easy it is to circle the drain, but I have come up with 10 tips on how to combat that, including the silly way I am using that particular phone to meet people and how you can do something similar. Number one, rescue yourself. Don't wait for anyone else to do it. It's your life and you do have the power to create change. For me and for many people, it's so easy when you're in a funk to go into victim mode. But remind yourself that you have the power to create your life. It's your responsibility to take control of your mental health and your mental well-being. The second tip is be aware of any bad habits. For me, that will be staying up far too late, I'll be on Facebook too long, and then I won't get up in the morning. That leads to a bad day and it just snowballs. I have learned that for me, the magic bullet is to get up at 5 a.m. Even though I don't want to, it serves me. It's a great habit. As soon as my feet, <laughs> as soon as my feet touch the floor, I feel like I'm winning. There's a book that really got me onto this early mornings and it's called The Morning Miracle and I'll put a link to that in the comments. The third tip is walks. Get outside, preferably in the beginning of the day, get your face in the sun, breathe fresh air because you're also moving and you're getting the blood flowing and walks have been proven to chase the blues away. The fourth tip is stay busy. It's good to have a project, something to do, a reason to get up and start the day, something to focus on. Because if you're sitting around with nothing to do, it's easy to, to ruminate. It's easy to kind of go down that spiral. So have a project. And if you don't have one, start a YouTube channel or a blog or just something like that that inspires you. Tip number five is go to social events. So the opposite of isolation is what? getting out there and being with people. You may not want to do it at first, but recognize that you will likely feel better when you do. Take advantage of any social events that are around you in your community. If you're staying in a campground, you will probably find that there's stuff going on. There certainly has been in every one I've been at. There's been bingo and board games and potluck and group hikes and pickleball, all kinds of stuff. But there's also meetups in just about every town. So look at meetup and check that out. Number six, say hello to people. So when you're walking your dog or walking to the dumpster, be approachable, smile, say hi. When somebody comes into your loop and they're setting up camp, when they're just about done, walk over and welcome them. 
ask them, you know, where they're from, how long they're going to stay. Campgrounds are such friendly places, so there's no reason to isolate if you are in a campground. And you can do the same if you're at home. Just make sure that you're out and about and that you're smiling and welcoming, even if you're standing in line at the post office. Number seven is self-care. Take yourself on a date, pamper yourself. It's really about self-love. So you may go out and get a massage or a facial or stay in and give yourself a pedicure or a manicure. How about you make yourself your favorite meal and curl up with a good book or a movie? Number eight is develop a spiritual practice. It can be really helpful to have a higher power to turn to when things get tough. For you, it might look like daily meditation, journaling, going to a Sunday service, or joining an online spiritual community. Try it. It really helps. Number nine is reach out. It is so hard for us to do, and yet it can be the most rewarding to just pick up that phone. No matter where you are, I'm sure you have a friend who would love to hear your voice, so pick up the phone and make that call. Tip number 10 is be welcoming and approachable. What that means if you're camping by yourself is to set out two chairs, not one. If you're a couple, set out four chairs and have something out on your patio that's a conversation piece that attracts people. So I have this silly, crazy phone sitting out there on the table. You could have some cool lights, a flag, a sign, just whatever it is, but having those extra chairs so when people come by and talk to you, they can sit down and you'll really get to know them. And all of this is really about loving yourself and learning how to be your own best friend. Well, I wanted to share my story of going down into the dark side because I think it would be a great example to help you when you're looking at the 10 tips and using them in your life. But first of all, I want to say that I am not at all in any way asking you to deny sadness or to push it away. We're human and being human means that we have a full range of emotions, including sadness, anger, and fear. And our society pretty much teaches us to always say we're fine all the time and be happy, happy, happy. So I want to make it clear I'm not asking you to push any emotions away. I actually believe that if you're feeling sad, that sadness is there for a message. It has something to tell you. So don't deny it. Absolutely honor all your feelings. The point of this video is about those times in my life and in all of our lives where we do things that don't serve us and we make things worse. So what happened for me is I moved to a new campground and now that it's later in the season, this campground was huge, but there was this section that was empty and I thought, wow, you know, I really wanted to have that retreat feeling, that solitude. So I chose a loop. There was nobody on it. It was a great view and I was like, wow, this is just going to be wonderful. And for the first week it was, I enjoyed the view and I just loved it. But then it just came to a tipping point where it was too much solitude and it started slipping into isolation. So here's the difference between living in a house or an apartment versus traveling all the time. Just that virtue of you living in one place, you become part of a neighborhood, you become part of a community. So people notice if you're always out in your yard and then you're not suddenly, they'll notice. Or if you don't show up for things that you normally show up for, whether you go to meetings or community events or exercise class and suddenly you're not there, people notice. And plus you have all those connections, even if it's just saying hello to the mailman every day, right? So when you're traveling, and this is what the realization really came to me was without any even camping neighbors, I was just not part of any community. So this solitude that I was feeling now slipped into isolation. I started to feel all alone and I started to feel sad. After all, I, I recognized that nobody would notice if I never left my camper for two days, nobody would knock on my door and go, hey, you need to get out. Nobody would notice. So this is what started the downward spiral into sadness. So what I did that made it worse was I started staying up too late. I got out of my good habit of going to bed early. I stayed up too late and what did I do? I went on Facebook. For me, that is a bad habit. If I'm on Facebook for a long time late at night, that is not good. So then I go to bed too late and then I wake up too late. For me, when I get up late in the morning, you know, 
I end up not having resilience. There's something that's missing so that if the slightest thing goes wrong, it's a big deal. Boy, if I drop the cap off my toothpaste, it's like, oh my God. Or if I spill water, I'm like screaming. I'm like, oh my God. You know, so it's like I have no resilience and I'm like right there on the edge of just, I can't take it anymore. And this happened for a couple days where I'm staying up late, I'm sleeping in too much, and then I'm in this place of sadness. I'm going into darkness. And how I got out of it was I recognized this. I mean, I definitely could feel I was in a dark place and I'm like, I need to do something. So I did two things. The first thing I did was I thought, well, I need a project. I need to really focus on my next video. So as a matter of fact, that video I set aside, it's almost done, but I set it aside because I felt like this video was more important and I wanted to get it out there. That video came about because people ask me all the time, how do you know if you're better with a class A camper or with a fifth wheel? Watch for that video, it's gonna be awesome. And I'm putting together the video, but guess what? I'm gonna need to approach people and ask them if I can walk around and film their camper. This is gonna be background stuff that I'm gonna put in my video. Well, when I'm in a dark place, I have to push myself to talk to people. I'm afraid they're going to reject me or tell me I'm bothering them or to go away. And I know it's just a story I'm making up. I, I realize it's not true, but that's just how I feel when I'm in that dark place. I really wanted to get that video done, so I thought I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to push myself to ask people. So I drove around and I saw four people sitting outside their camper and I really wanted to get some footage of their camper. So I got out of my truck and I said, hey, do you mind? I'm a YouTube creator. I would love to, you know, I'm making a video about these different campers and I'd love to video yours. The people were so friendly. They were like, oh my gosh, yes. And we started talking. They wanted to know about my channel and I asked them about traveling and, you know, where they were from and where they were headed and that kind of thing. Well, long story short, we became fast friends. So it gets better. They wanted to come see my camper the next day, and they did. They came up here, talked to me for an hour, all four of them, and we visited, and it was so nice. So the other thing I did was decide that I wanted to go to a Sunday service. I'm used to going to a weekly spiritual service in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm a member of the Ahava CSL, which is Centers for Spiritual Living. And they're everywhere. Basically, they are open and accepting. They always start their service saying, whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you're absolutely welcome here. So I found a CSL close to me and I went to it on Sunday and of course it was just loving and wonderful. And after service, that's where I got the crazy foam. They had a bunch of stuff for sale, sort of a an estate sale that was coming up and I saw this phone and it wasn't for sale, but they gave it to me and they said, yes, you can have it. And it was just so awesome and crazy because as you know, that's just the perfect little conversation piece for me to have out there. And the other thing that happened was two women invited me to lunch after service. And then there was a, a friendship dinner that the community was having. So I went to that a couple days later. Well, as you can see, all this connection just really energized me. So I hope that my story helped you in some way of, you know, understanding how I went down in this hole and how I got back up. And I hope that that was something that would be useful for you to hear. And I want to invite you to join my community. I am building a community where we all help and inspire and support one another. And it is called the Amazing Team or the A-Team for short. And how you join is just push on that subscribe button and you become part of this community. And we are going to build just a really awesome, awesome group. So welcome to that. Write in the comments. I want to hear from you. Any tips that you have for avoiding the dark side or getting out of the dark side. And if you liked this video, you'll love the next one, which is all about how I started my cross-country adventure. I'll see you in the next video.